Hello everyone, this is Vivek and let's get started with the Quant's full length test and uh, let's get into the first question. I guess you should have seen 35 questions in this test. So let's get started with the questions. Firstly, uh, a train traveling at 72 kilometers per hour crosses a platform in 30 seconds and a man standing on the platform in 18 seconds. What is the length of the platform in meters? So it's very clear the train is traveling at 72 kilometers per hour, which means it can travel 72 kilometers in 60 minutes. An hour is nothing but 60 minutes. We could even say that as it can travel 72,000 meters. 72,000 meters is covered by the train in 3,600 seconds. We all know in an hour we have 3,600 seconds, which is very clear. 3,600 into 2 gives you 7,200, which means another zero added to it. So 3,600 seconds, it goes 72,000 meters, which is nothing but for a second, it goes 20 meters. Then in 30 seconds, it crosses a platform, which means the entire length of the train has to cross the platform, which means the train, if it has to cross the platform, the entire length of the, the back end of the train has to cross the platform which means the platform's length fully has to be covered by the train and also the back end of the train has to cover has to cross the platform which means both the platform's length as well as the train's length gets added when the train gets gets to cross the platform this we would have discussed in the class so which means in 30 seconds how much does it travel so 30 seconds we would get how much the the length that we get will be the length of both the train as well as the platform together so when we cross multiply, so we, we could very clearly get it as 30 into 20, which means we know that for a second it goes 20 meters. So for 30 into 20 gives you 600 meters. So it travels 600 meters in that 30 seconds, which is nothing but the length of the train as well as the platform. Next, the second information given is, and it crosses a man standing on the platform in 18 seconds, which means the entire length of the train crosses the man. So which means the train from the, front end of the train till it goes till the back end the trains back end crosses the man it takes 18 seconds which means the entire length of the train if it has to be crossed it takes 18 seconds so in 18 seconds whatever is traveled so 72,000 meters in 60 seconds that is very obvious uh, in 60 minutes which is nothing but 3,600 seconds it covers then in 18 seconds how much does it cover it's very obvious we know it's going to be 18 into 20 which is nothing but 360 meters so this 360 meters is covered and this 360 meters is nothing but the length of the train just nothing but the length of the train we know the train and the platform together is 600 meters and the train alone is 360 meters then the platform alone will be 600 minus 360 which is nothing but 240 meters so 240 meters is going to be the length of the platform so a very simple technique just that we'll have to be get uh, we'll have to get used to the uh, the problems and also the methodologies. The second question: A train traveling at 100 kilometers per hour overtakes a motorbike traveling at 64 kilometers per hour in 40 seconds. So, what is the length of the train in meters? So, it's very obvious the train traveling at 100 kilometers per hour, per hour overtakes a motorbike, which means the train overtakes means it goes from the back and it crosses the motorbike. So, which means it travels in the same direction of the bike. So, we know relative speed is going to be su subtracted here. The, the speed of the train and the motorbike will be subtracted. Reason being, if let's assume I travel at 10 kilometers per hour and there's another vehicle, a car which is traveling ahead of me at 5 kilometers per hour. When I cross that car, I can overtake that only at 5 kilometers per hour. I can't overtake because I am traveling at 10 and the bike, uh, the car is already traveling at 5. So, which means I left it anything more than 5 is what I can cross it with. So, I know I am going at 10, which means it's 5 more than the actual speed of the car. So, that is where the relative speed works, which means because I am going from the back, whatever I am traveling extra, more than the, the vehicle which is traveling ahead of me, that is how much in that speed is with, in which I can cross the the previous, the uh, the vehicle which is going ahead of me so the same concept is used here so which means the train is traveling at 100 and the motorbike is traveling at 64 so so the relative speed is going to be 100 minus 64 which means the train can travel across the bike only at 36 kilometers per hour it can't be crossing it 
at 100 kilometers per hour reason being it is already traveling at the car bike is already traveling at 64 so which means 36 kilometers per hour is nothing but 36,000 meters is in which it can cross in 3600 seconds 3600 seconds it can cover 36,000 meters extra so what does then in 40 seconds it is told the entire length of the train is crossing the the platform the person the motorbike which means in 40 seconds whatever is traveled is going to be the length of the train which is crossing that motorbike so in 3600 seconds we go 36000 meters then in 40 seconds we go 400 meters cross multiplication gives you the answer and I think the answer is 400 meters here what is the length of the train which is going to be 400 meters reason being the entire length of the train take can be overtaking the bike in 40 seconds only so that is how much we get the answer so the next question Jim travels the first three hours of the journey at 60 kilometers per hour speed and the remaining five hours at 24 kilometers 24 miles per hour so I'm sorry it's not kilometers it's miles what is the average speed of Jim's travel in miles per hour so it's very obvious 60 kilometers per hour 60 miles per hour for three hours he travels so which means he travels 60 miles per hour for three hours so he travels 180 miles he can travel 180 miles per hour and the other side on the other side we have uh, the remaining five uh, remaining five hours at 24 kilo miles per hour so he travels 24 miles per hour five hours which gives you 120 miles so in total he travels 300 miles in how many hours 300 miles per hour in how many hours it is very obvious it is eight hours in eight hours he travels eight hours he travels 300 miles so four hour for an hour how much does he travel that's going to be the speed so 300 miles is covered in eight hours eight hours then in one hour how much does he travel so it's very obvious the answer is going to be 300 by 8 which is nothing but 37.5 miles per hour 37 point miles 5.5 miles per hour that is going to be the answer for this question so 37.5 miles per hour just cross multiply so the next question a very similar question steve traveled the first two hours of his journey at 40 km 40 miles per hour the last three at 80 miles per hour find the average speed it's a very similar question as the previous question doesn't need any explanation so 40 into 2 40 into 2 gives us 80 so he travels for two hours the next one is going to be 80 into 3 80 into 3 which is going to be the next two which gives you 240 so in total he travels 320 miles in how many hours he travels in five hours in five hours he travels 320 so what is the speed of the average speed for the entire journey it's nothing but for five hours if it is 320 then it's going to be for one hour how much does he travel just a cross multiplication so our answer is going to be 320 by 5 which is nothing but 64 miles per hour miles per hour a very simple question again so a very simple type as the previous question so next question an aeroplane covers a certain distance at a speed of 240 kilometers per hour in 5 hours to cover the same distance at 3 hours and 1 by 3 hours which is nothing but 3 hours and 20 minutes it must travel at the speed of so we know it's going at 240 kilometers per hour in 5 hours so so it goes 240 kilometers for 1 hour so as per that information given it goes 240 kilometers in 1 hour so one hour it goes 240 kilometers in five hours how much does it go five hours it can go 1200 meters it travels 1200 meters in five hours so 1200 meters is covered by it in five hours so if it has to cover the same 1500 in 200 minutes which is nothing but three one by three is nothing but 200 minutes so 1200 meters uh, 1200 kilometers has to be covered in 200 meters in 200 uh, minutes so then what should be its speed so speed is nothing but kilometers per hour so in an hour we have 60 minutes so how much does it go so just cross multiplication we know 200 into 6 gives you 1200 very similarly 60 into 6 can give us the answer it's nothing but 360 kilometers per hour or just cross multiply so your answer is going to be 360 kilometers per hour so next one 
60 percentage of a number is added to 60 to get the number itself. I'm sorry, there's two sixes there, which is a mistake. So 60 percentage of a number is added to 60. 60 percentage of a number is added to 60 to get the number itself. What is the number? So 60 percentage of a number is added to 60. So to get the number itself. So what is the number? So we know very clearly 60 percentage. Any number is going to be 100 percentage of itself. So if it is 100 percentage of itself, if 60 percentage of a number is added to some number to get 100 percentage of the number, then how much is added there? So we should very clearly understand that 40 percentage should be added there. Only if 40 percentage is added, we would get the number itself. So then 40 percentage of the number, instead of 40 percentage of the number, they have added 60 in that, which means 40 percentage is nothing but 60. 40 percentage is nothing but 60. Then the number is going to be what? 100 percentage of the number. If 40 percentage is 60, then 100 percentage is how much? Just cross multiply. So our answer would be 60 into 100 divided by 40. So it's very clear with this, you can get the answer as 150. Or this could also be done the other way, which is nothing but we do it, we get the answer as 150. Or this could also be done the other way, that is, uh, we could take it as uh, fractions. We know that 60 percentage is nothing but 3 by 5. So out of 5 parts, 3 parts of the value, 60 percentage of a number is added to 60. So 3 parts of the number is added to 60, which means so that you get the number itself. The number is nothing but 5 parts. So we know 3 parts is getting added to some parts to get 5 parts. So how much parts should be added to this? We know 2 parts should be added. Only then we will get 5 parts of that number. So if 2 parts of the number, instead of the 2 parts, we add it as 60. Then if 2 parts is 60, we know 3 parts is going to be 2 parts is 60 is 1 part is 30. So then 3 parts is going to be 90. So 90 plus 60 is nothing but the 5 parts value which is 150. This can also be done this way. Any ways which we are comfortable with. So the next question. Uh, 30 people can finish your work in 25 days. If the number of days has to be reduced to 15, then by how much, how many percentage should the number of people doing the work should increase to? So how many percentage is the question? So let's see if 30 people can finish the work in 25 days. So if the number of days has to be reduced to 15. So 30 people can do it in 25 days. So if the number of days has to be reduced to 15. So we know it's going to be reduced to 15. So how many percentage of the number should be reduced? So we very clearly know the number of days has to be reduced. So the number of people doing the work should be increased. That is one method of doing it. So if it has to be reduced in this side it's reducing the other side it's increasing so we know when one part of the value is getting reduced the other part is increasing you should just directly multiply this so our answer would be 30 into 25 divided by 15 so the number of people required to finish the work would be 50 people 50 people are required to finish the work but here by how many percentage should the number of people doing the work should get increased by how many percentage is going to be nothing but uh, which is not which is going to be 20 people should be extra out of 30 which was already present the percentage is going to be 66.65 I guess the answer is not here so the percentage is going to be 66.67 because 20 people have to be getting increased from 30 so 20 on 30 is nothing but 2 by 3 2 by 3 is nothing but 62.66.66 percentage that is how much the percentage should get increased. If the total number of people is the question, the answer is going to be 50. Maybe the question is intended to ask the number of people instead of percentage. So the number of people is going to be increased to 50 so that we can get the answer as. So the 50 people have to work to finish the work in 15 days. So if this can also be done in the other method, that is, uh, so if 25 to 15, the number of people from 30 people were used working, so the number of people is reduced from 25 to 15, which means it's get, getting reduced by 10. It gets reduced by 10 on 25. From 25, it's getting reduced by 10, which is nothing but 2 by 5 is getting less. We know if 2 by 5 gets less, the other side, that is the number of people, it has to increase by 2 minus 5, which is nothing but 2 by 3. 2 by 3 has to be increased. So if 2 by 3 has to be increased, 
it is very obvious 2 by 3 of the total number total number of people which is 30 people so the answer would be 20 people getting increased 20 people increased 20 people more which means 30 plus 20 which is nothing but 50 people 50 people if you put it as percentage we know 2 by 3 is nothing but 66.67 percentage which is not present in the option the actual answer is 66.67 if it is for percentage if it is for total number of people it's going to be 50 so the next question product of two numbers is 720 if one of the number is increased by 20 percent then the other number should be reduced by what percentage to remain at the same product so we know we would have already shared a video on this kind of problems that is we know the answer is going to be the right hand side is going to be constant so product of two numbers is 720 one of the numbers is increased by 20 percent so if it is 20 percentage we know 20 by 100 is nothing but 1 by 5 so one of the side is increased by 1 by 5 so if it is increased by 1 by 5 we know the other side will be reduced by 1 remains the same 5 plus 1 gives you 6 so the other side gets reduced by 1 by 6 so 1 by 5 increases 1 by 6 reduces 1 by 6 is nothing but 1 by 6 into 100 gives you 16.67 so 16.67 percentage gets reduced so number of by other number should be reduced by what percentage is the question the answer is 16.67 a very simple question you don't have to do anything more just have to do when there's so much increase they have to say there'll be so much decrease if the product is remaining constant so the next question a's total in examination is 40 percent more than b then b's total is less than a's total by this is a very similar question as the previous question we know total of a is 40 percent more than b so if it is 40 percent more than b we know it's 40 by 100 40 by 100 is nothing but 2 by 5 so if there is a 2 by 5 increase there's a 2 by 5 increase in the total on one side the other side will be reduced by we know the numerator remains the same the denominator will be 5 plus 2 which is nothing but 7 because it's increasing we just adding if that is saying that the to a's total number is 40 percent less than b we would have subtracted that is where the previous question we would have the two questions back we would have subtracted reason being we there the the question was it is reduced so when it says reduced we just subtract it when they say it's increased we just add it so 2 by 7 2 by 7 gets reduced this side so 2 by 7 is nothing but 1 by 7 is 14.28 then 2 by 7 is nothing but 2 by 7 into 100 if we put it our answer would be 28.56 percent so the total is less by 28.56 percent so the next question if the area of a rectangle remains constant though the length is increased by 25 percent then the breadth is reduced by a very similar question here also the area of the rectangle remains constant so one side is increased by 25 percent so if it's 25 percent increased we know 25 by 100 is nothing but 1 by 4 by now we should have got the fraction part also very clearly so that we could get to the problems get to the answers very quickly than ever before so 25 percent is nothing but 1 by 4 that's an increase of 1 by 4 we know there is an increase we just do the same numerator remains the same and here we should just add it 4 plus 1 is nothing but 5 so 1 by 5 there is a reduction when there's a 1 by 4 increase there's a 1 by 5 reduction 1 by 5 is nothing but into 100 when we put it we get the answer as 20 percent so the answer for this is 20 percent 20 percent reduction in breadth gives you the same same uh, area so if if you're still not able to uh, understand how if you doubt that okay will that will we get the same answer you could just try this with this question in this question we could try to see how exactly this working if the area of a rectangle remains constant though the length is increased by 25 percent very simple example if we take 100 is the length and we just take uh, 100 is the length and 20 is the breadth so we get 2000 as the area of a rectangle so if the same thing if they have told the the length is increased by 25 percent which means the length becomes 125 then we know the area should be the same then breadth will be how much breadth will be nothing but 2000 divided by 125 can give us the answer 2000 by 125 gives you the answer as 16 so the breadth is reduced from 20 to 16 which means it's reduced by 4 out of 20 so which means 1 by 5 reduction that 1 by 5 is nothing but for 1 by 5 is nothing but 20 percent which we've got the answer as a very simple technique so next 
the previous shortcut would have helped you would definitely help you in a lot of problems where you can get to the answers much quickly so next question how many two digit numbers can be generated using the digits 1 2 3 4 5 without repeating any digit so there's no repetition there's only two digit numbers that has to be formed so we know the first digit can be 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 or 5 so the first number can be uh, filled in five ways I can put any of these numbers if I had used any of these numbers for example if I had used 3 I can't use the number again because they've said the numbers cannot be repeated so now the second I could put any of the numbers that is 1 2 4 5 except 3 so I can fill it in four ways so 5 into 4 20 numbers can be formed in this 22 digit numbers can be formed with these digits so the next question there are 10 women and 15 men in an office how many ways can a person be selected so if one person has to be selected from 10 women and 15 men I know there are different options for me uh, they've not mentioned women or men it can be any gender so I, I have how many options with me so it's 10 for women and 20 15 for men so I have 25 options to pick from to get one man just add it from to get one person I'll have to choose it in 25 ways I can have 25 different options because I can choose the first women or the second or the third or the fourth or fifth or sixth likewise I could go up to 10 women same thing when it comes to men I can choose any of them right from one or two or three or four 15 ways I can choose the men so it's totally going to be 25 options with which I could get to the answer so the answer is going to be 25 a simple technique so next question there are 10 women and 15 men in an office how many ways can a team of man and a woman can be selected so a man and a woman are required in a team so if for example we have 10 women so if I take choose women one if I choose one woman the first woman for her to put a man I have 15 options because I can put man 1 or man 2 or man 3 or man 4 or man 5 or man 6 up to 15 so for one woman I have 15 options where I can take any of the 15 people men as a teammate so for one woman when I choose I have 15 options in the men say the similarly if I choose the second women I have another 15 options because again it's going to be man 1 or man 2 or man 3 or man 4 man 5 up to man 15 so women 3 if I choose again 15 man women 4 it's 15 women 5 it's 15 so up to 10 women we have so for every woman I'll have 15 15 options so we have 10 women so your answer is going to be 15 into 10 which is nothing but 150 options similarly if you even if we choose the man first for one man I can choose 10 women so similarly for one man if it's 10 women so similarly second man third man up to 15 men so 15 men have 10 10 women as options so we'll get 15 into 10 which is nothing but 150 options a very simple question next one how many three digit numbers can be formed from 2 3 5 6 7 and 9 which is divisible by 5 and none of the digits are repeated so we know how many three digit numbers is going to be a question and we know the number should be divisible by 5 so if the number has to be divisible by 5 for example 25 or 30 it should end with 5 or 0 here since we don't have 0 here so the last digit can only be 5 so it can be filled only in one way that is only 5 can be filled in that place so the last digit has to be filled first because they are asking for divisible by 5 so it can be filled only in one way so and none of the digits is repeated which means 5 is used already we can't use 5 again so the second digit can be 2 or 3 or 6 or 7 or 9 so it can be filled in so the, the first digit first digit can be filled in five ways reason being the last digit is filled the first and second doesn't have any conditions so it's obvious five ways I can fill it the second so if I fill 9 as the first digit for example for the second digit I still have 2 3 or 6 or 7 so I have four options so totally I have 5 into 4 that's 20 options here so how many five uh, two to three digit numbers can be formed with two three five six seven nine which are divisible by five where none of the digits is repeated so nothing but 20 so it's 20 different numbers which can be formed so let's get started with the next question so our next question says how many four digit numbers can be formed from the digits one two three four five six which are divisible by four so if a number has to be divisible by four the divisibility of four itself says the last two digits should be divisible by four so we need only four digit numbers so we're going to take one two three four any of the numbers so from the numbers we know the last two digits should be divisible by four so we'll get the number as 12 
is a possibility then we have 16 as a possibility then we have 24 as a possibility or probably what else do we have do not have 23 or 25 or 26 no that's no possibility so if it starts with 3 3 32 is a possibility if it starts with 3 another one is 36 is another possibility then we still have uh, if we're starting with 4 we don't have any of the 41 42 43 45 46 doesn't work out because none of the digits has to be repeated so we can't use 44 here so the next one is 5 it starts with 5 51 52 is a possibility then we still have 50 uh 6 is a possibility that is 56 is a possibility then we still have 64 as a possibility so 64 as a possibility so we have so many numbers as possibilities any other number that we've missed out i think one two three four five six seven eight i don't think we've missed out anything so we'll check so if it is 12 which is used as the last two digits the first two digits can be filled in instead of one and two we can use it in four ways three or four or five six so four ways can be filled the first digit can be filled second digit can be filled in three ways so totally 12 digits can be found with the last two digits as 12. similarly if it is 16 it's going to be again 16 one or six can't be used we can use two or three or four or five so the first digit can be filled in four ways second digit can be filled in three ways so it's again going to be 12. similarly for each number we'll get 12 12 12 options so we have eight sets of numbers so the answer is going to be 12 into 8 which is nothing but 96 but 96 is not present in the option we have the option as none so the answer is going to be none so it cannot be 90 uh, any of them 192 16204 is not a possibility so the answer is going to be 96 so next question find the reminder for 1956 1955 into 1956 into 1955 into 1954 divided by 19 so it's very clear here the number is going to be divided by 19 we know 1956 we can take it 19 when we divide it we know 19 gets cancelled we can very easily take it as 56 into 55 into 54 because 19 is divisible by 19 itself so we can take the number as 19 56 into 55 into 54 itself because 19 gets cancelled easily so when we divide 56 by 19 the option is going to be answer is going to be 18 is going to be the reminder here then we have 55 by 19 gives you 17 54 by 19 gives you 16 these are all the negative positive reminders that we get but with this we are not going anywhere because we will have to multiply all the three numbers and we get the answer very late instead we take the negative reminders here so 18 by 19 the reminder is going to be minus 1 minus 1 is the negative reminder 17 gives you minus 2 and 16 gives us minus 3 so minus 2 then we get minus 3 so if we take minus 3 as the negative reminder so we get minus 1 into minus 2 into minus 3 gives you 2 minus 6 minus 6 is a negative reminder minus 6 is a negative reminder and the positive reminder will be just the denominator 19 minus 6 which is nothing but 13 so our reminder is going to be 13 we have already discussed these problems in our class but so just that we'll have to do this then the negative reminder is found we can't take it as minus 6 itself because minus cannot be used there negative reminder cannot be used basically so we change them into a positive div uh, a positive reminder just by adding it divide, dividing i mean uh, adding it with 19 itself the denominator so this is how we could very easily get to the answer here so the answer is going to be 13 so next question so the next question is uh, the unit digit of 43 into 40 69 into 551 into 9242 it's a very simple question all that we have to do is just multiply the last digits so the last digit when i multiply 2 into 1 is 2 2 into 9 is 18 so the last digit stays as 8 so 8 into 3 is 24 so it's the last digit is 4 so it's ending with 4 so our unit digit is going to be 4 just multiply the last digits and remember remember the last digit alone we could still do 3 into 9 is 27 so we remember 7 only 7 into 1 is 7 7 into 2 is 14 14 is nothing but 4 is the last digit so unit digit is going to be 4 next number the least number which must be added to 1728 to make it a perfect square so to make it a perfect square what number should be added to 1728 to make it a perfect square so we very clearly we can get to an understanding here uh, though we don't have any idea about it we can use a technique here we know uh, 40 square is 1600 this many of us should be knowing so if it is 40 square is 1600 we know 50 square is 2500 so this is lying between 40 square and 50 square 
and we can very easily clearly come to a conclusion it can also be less than 45 square reason being uh, if it is near 50 square our answer should be around 2000 or 1900 or 1000 uh, I mean 1800 at least I mean 1900 or 2000 plus that is how much we'll get but it is 1728 so it should be less than between 40 and 45 I'll give you a technique which can make things easier the normal technique that we use here is uh, if it is 40 more than 40 we try to find what is 41 square so the technique that we used already we have a video on this 41 square how to find it easily just take 25 as a reference and 50 as a reference when compared to 50 it is 9 less so 9 square is going to be 81 so the answer is 81 and compared to 25 41 is 16 more so 17681 this is 41 square so it is not 1681 cannot be the answer because it's 1728 how much should be added is the question so it's not going to be 41 square so what is next 42 square so 42 square is going to be again 8 less so 8 square is 64 8 square is 64 compared to 25 it is uh, 17 more so 1764 so the nearest number should be 1728 how much should be added to make it 1764 because the nearest square number so it's very clear 1764 is a square number how much should be added plus 2 gives you 30 again we have 34 so 34 plus 2 is going to be 36 so 36 should be added to make it a perfect square so very simple technique we could also use for people who are saying that okay i don't know this technique how do i do it so the best way of doing it is like everyone knows what is 40 square 40 square is 1600 so we are not sure about the next square all that we have to do is just add 40 the next number is going to be 41 so 40 plus 41 is going to be 81 so just add 81 to this this gives you 1681 the next square number the next thing what we have to do is the next square is going to be 1681 plus just 41 plus 42 41 plus 42 is the next number that is this square the name of this number and the next number so 41 plus 42 gives you 83 83 uh, when you add it to 1681 we get the answer is 4 6 7 1 so 1764 there itself a very simple technique all that we have to do is if it is what is 6 square we are not sure all that we have to do is we know 4 square 4 square is nothing but 16 we know that so if we're not sure about uh, I mean we're not sure about 6 square if we know 5 square 5 square is 25 all that we have to do is 5 plus the next number is 6 5 plus 6 is 11 25 plus 11 gives you 36 a very simple technique this number and the next number if it is 9 square all that you have to do is you should know 8 square 8 square is 64 64 plus 8 plus 9 8 plus 9 is nothing but 17 64 plus 71 is 81 a very simple technique that gives you the answer so answer is 1764 36 which of the following cannot be the number of zeros at the end of a factorial a very important question many may not have an understanding over this why do we have zeros at the end of a factorial so when do a factorial get a zero we know if it is 2 factorial our answer is going to be 2 into 1 if it is 3 factorial it's 3 into 2 into 1 if it is 4 factorial it's going to be 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 so it's very obvious it's just a multiplication so why do we get this zero question here is because the minute if a zero has to be created a 5 has to be multiplied by 2 so that we get a zero see we get 10 or we multiply it by any even number we get a zero that's 20 5 into 6 gives you 30 so which all that we have to do is 5 into any even number 5 into 8 gives you 40 so we have a 5 and an even number gives you a 0 so if that is the case which cannot be which of the following cannot be the number of zeros at the end of a factorial so we know if 1 5 multiplies with one even number we get 1 0 similarly if there are two 5s for example 25 into 4 25 into 4 gives us 100 this gives you two zeros so a factorial for example from 5 factorial 4 factorial is 24 then 5 factorial on we start getting zeros that is 5 factorial is nothing but 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 because we have a 5 there and we have a lot of even numbers there 1 5 is present we get 1 0 1 20 we get 6 factorial we get 7 20 we get only 1 0 here reason being it is 6 into 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 there are a lot of even numbers that is 
फोर एज टू टू एज इज एवन नंबर फोर इज एवन नंबर सिक्स इज एवन नंबर दाउ वी हैव टू मनी ईवन नंबर वी हैव ओनली वन फाइव देर दैट्स वे वी गेट वन जीरो दैट सेवन ट्वेंटी सो सिमिलरली इफ इट सेवन फैक्टर इज गोन बी फाइव जीरो फोर जीरो वन जीरो सेवन फैक्टर विल गिव्स यू फाइव जीरो फोर जीरो विच इज ओनली वन जीरो वी ओनली टॉकिंग बोथ द लास्ट जीरो सो फाइव जीरो वन फोर जीरो गिव्स यू ओनली वन जीरो एट फैक्टर विल गिव्स यू वन जीरो ओनली द नेक्स्ट टाइम वेन वी गेट टू जीरो इट्स गोन बी टेन फैक्टोरियल रीज मेन टेन फैक्टोरियल इज नथिंग बट टेन फैक्टोरियल इज नथिंग बट नो वी डोंट गेट आई मीन टू जीरो जीर वी स्टिल गेट वन जीरो ओनली अंटिल वी गेट ट्वेंटी फाइव आई मीन वी गेट टेन फैक्टोरियल वॉट वी डू यर इज टेन फैक्टोरियल इज नथिंग बट फाइव इन टू टू विच इज नथिंग बट टेन सो टेन फैक्टोरियल इज नथिंग बट टेन इंटू नाइन इंटू एट इंटू सेवन इंटू सिक्स इंटू फाइव इंटू फोर इंटू सेवन इंटू सिक्स इंटू फाइव इंटू फोर इंटू थ्री इंटू टू इंटू वन वी वेरी क्लियरली नो यर दर आर नंबर ऑफ फाइव आर गोइन बी वेरी सिंपल यर द नंबर ऑफ फाइव आर गोइन बी टू फाइव यर दैर इज अ फाइव यर इन टेन वी हैव फाइव इंटू टू सो दैर इज टू फाइव यर सो वी गेट टू जीरो सो इफ इट इज टेन फैक्टोरियल वी गेट टू जीरो रीजन बींग देर आर टू फाइव दर इफ वी गेट फिफ्टीन फैक्टोरियल वी ग्लेट थ्री जीरो रीजन बींग इट्स गोइन बी फिफ्टीन इज गोइन बी फाइव इंटू थ्री टेन इज गोइन बी फाइव इंटू टू फाइव इज गोइन बी फाइव इंटू वन सो ऑब्वियसली वी हैव थ्री फाइव सो एन वी गेट थ्री जीरो सिमिलरली दिस इज हाउ द पैटर्न वर्क दैट इज द केस द क्वेश्चन इज विच आर द फॉलोइंग के नॉट बी द नंबर ऑफ जीरो एट द एंड ऑफ अ फैक्टोरियल सो वी नो फिफ्टीन फैक्टोरियल इज गिविंग यू थ्री जीरो ट्वेंटी फैक्टोरियल गिव्स यू फोर जीरो देन ट्वेंटी फैक्टोरियल प्लस गिव्स यू फोर जीरो द मेट वी गेट ट्वेंटी फाइव फैक्टोरियल वॉट एपन्स दैर इज ट्वेंटी फाइव फैक्टोरियल इज नथिंग बट ट्वेंटी फाइव फैक्टोरियल इज नथिंग बट ट्वेंटी फाइव इज इट्स एल ट्वेंटी फाइव फैक्टोरियल इट्स एल विल गिव यू फाइव इंटू फाइव दैन द नेक्स्ट फाइव वील गेट इट इज ट्वेंटी फैक्टोरियल ट्वेंटी फैक्टोरियल इज फाइव इंटू फोर एंड फिफ्टीन फैक्टोरियल इज फाइव इंटू थ्री टेन फैक्टोरियल इज फाइव इंटू टू एंड फाइव फैक्टोरियल इज फाइव इंटू वन सो दीज आर वेर वील गेट द फाइव फ्रॉम सो इफ दैट इज द केस वील गेट इन ट्वेंटी फाइव फैक्टोरियल वी विल सिंस वी हैव टू फाइव देर फाइव इंटू फाइव दैर्स टू फाइव इन ट्वेंटी फैक्टोरियल वी गेट वन फाइव फिफ्टीन वी गेट वन इन टेन वी गेट वन एंड फाइव वी गेट वन वी टोटली गेट सिक्स फैक्ट सिक्स फाइव देर एंड वी हैव अ लॉर्ड वी एव नंबर्स टू गिव अ जीरो सो वी गेट सिक्स फाइव विल गिव यू सिक्स जीरो वी डोंट गेट फाइव जीरो एट ऑल रीजन बींग ट्वेंटी फाइव फैक्टोरियल इज गिविंग यू टू फाइव बिकॉज ऑफ विच वी गेट टू सिक्स फ्रॉम फोर वी आर जम्पिंग ऑन टू सिक्स जीरो वी डोंट गेट ऑन टू फाइव जीरो सो द आंसर इज यर गोइन बी विच के नॉट बी द एंड ऑफ अ फैक्टोरियल विच के नॉट बी फाइव जीरो के नॉट बी एट द एंड ऑफ अ फैक्टोरियल इट कैन बी ओनली सिक्स और फोर और थ्री और टू दैट्स हाउ इट वर्क इट डजन वर्क एज फाइव यू डोंट गेट फाइव देर सो द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन अ बैग कंटेन्स फिफ्टी पाइस ट्वेंटी फाइव पाइस टेन पाइस क्वाइंस इन द रेशियो फाइव इज टू नाइन इज टू फोर अमाउंटिंग टू रुपीज टू जीरो सिक्स फाइन द नंबर ऑफ क्वाइंस ऑफ ईच टाइप सो इट्स वेरी क्लियर यूर द बैग इज हैविंग फिफ्टी पाइस ट्वेंटी फाइव पाइस टेन पाइस क्वाइंस एंड ईज इन द रेशियो फाइव इज टू नाइन इज टू फोर सो वी डोंट नो द नंबर ऑफ क्वाइंस यूर सो वी टेक इट एज फाइव एक्स इज टू नाइन एक्स इज टू फोर एक्स एंड इट्स वेरी क्लियर फिफ्टी पाइस क्वाइंस फाइव फिफ्टी पाइस क्वाइंस सो वी गेट फाइव इंटू फिफ्टी पाइस क्वाइंस इन एक्स प्लस नाइन इंटू ट्वेंटी फाइव पाइस क्वाइंस इन टू एक्स प्लस फोर इंटू टेन पाइस क्वाइंस इन एक्स सो विच गिव्स यू टू टू पॉइंट फाइव जीरो प्लस टू पॉइंट टू फाइव प्लस फोर्टी पाइस सो विच वेरी क्लियरली गिव्स यू फाइव पॉइंट वन फाइव एक्स सो फाइव पॉइंट वन फाइव एक्स एक्स इज नथिंग बट द नंबर ऑफ क्वाइंस वी आर नॉट श्योर इज इक्वल टू टू जीरो सिक्स वी डोंट नो वॉट इज द नंबर ऑफ एक्स वी हैव सो एक्स इज नथिंग बट टू जीरो सिक्स डिवाइड बाई फाइव पॉइंट फाइव वन फाइव सो विच गिव्स यू फोर्टी सो एक्स इज नथिंग बट फोर्टी सो इफ एक्स इज फोर्टी वी नो द फाइन द नंबर ऑफ क्वाइंस इज गोइन बी फाइव एक्स नाइन एक्स फोर एक्स विच मीन्स फाइव इंटू फोर इज गोइन बी टू हंड्रेड टू हंड्रेड फिफ्टी Two hundred fifty pies coins and nine into forty is going to be three sixty. Three sixty twenty five pies coins and four into forty is nothing but one sixty ten pies coins. So answer for that is going to be two hundred come out three sixty come out one sixty. All that we are doing is five x into five into some value of fifty pies and nine into some value of twenty five pies and four into some value of ten pies. So we are not sure the number of x there. That is when we put the total value that is five into fifty pies 
into x plus 9 into 25 pi is into x. Similarly, we go on and we get the answers of x as 40. So, the next question. So, we go on to the next question. A batsman makes a scores of 80 in the 16th innings, increases the average by 4. So, what is the average after the 16th innings? So, he scores a 80 because of which his average increased by 4 for all the 16 innings. So, for all the 16 innings, it's increased by 4. So, which means, so for each innings, the first innings, second innings, third innings, each one gets increased by 4. So, we would have done a video on this already. So, probably if you watch that, you'll get an understanding over it. So, all that we are trying to do here is in each innings, we increase by 4. So, totally, he had scored 16 into 4, which is 64 runs, which is extra, which is extra apart from his actual average. So, he had scored 64 runs, which is extra that is shared among all the innings of his. So, what is his average after the 16th innings? So, which means after that innings, what is his score? So, he had scored 64 runs extra, which means till the 16th innings, which means till the 15th innings, his score was, his average would only be 80 minus 64. Reason being, why do we do 80 minus 64 is nothing but 16 is going to be his average. Reason being, 64 is that extra runs which he scored. So, his average is only going to be 16 till that innings. So, till that innings, his average was only 16. Because he had scored that 64, his average increased by 4. So, in the 16th innings, his average is increased by 4. So, his average, new average is going to be 16 plus 4, which is going to be 20. The new average of his is nothing but 20. So, very simple question. All that he is trying to tell you is, he scores 80. Average is nothing but anything which is scored apart from extra or anything which is done less will get shared among everyone present there. So, he scores 80 which is shared as 4 for all his innings. So, his 16 innings are there. So, each gets 4, 4, 4. So, which means he had scored 64 and 16 into 4, which is nothing but 64 runs, which is extra apart from his actual average. So, because of which 80 minus 64, which is 16, is his actual average. In this innings, he had scored that 4 extra, which is get because of the score that he's made in the 16th innings. So, 16 plus 4, which is 20, is his new average. So, next question. In a cricket match, 6 players at an average of X of their runs, average increased by 12 if the 7th player makes a score of 136. Similarly, here also, if he scores 136 runs for each player, for all the 7 player, it's getting increased by 12. So, which means he had scored how much extra? 7 into 12, 84 extra from his actual. So, if he scores 84 extra, his actual would have been, that is, 136 minus 84 was his actual average. Because if he had scored if you, uh, the average is going to be what? 52. If he had scored 52 itself, his average would have stayed at 52 itself. Now, because he had scored 136, his runs is getting, anything that he scored extra is getting, is getting divided equally among all the innings of his. So, 84 he had scored. So, is it's getting divided among all the 7 players. That is, all the uh, players who are present there. So, if it is going to be 84, he scores extra. That's divided among, dividing among all the 7 players. So, that's why the average gets increased by 12. So, what is his average of the first six players? So, first six players is going to be only 52. And the seventh player gets added. Only then the average becomes 64. Reason being, he gets 12 extra average. So, the answer is going to be 52 for the first uh, six players. So, the next question. Uh, next question is, Rahul is 15 years elder than Ra Rowan. If five years ago, Rahul was three times as old as Rowan. So, Rahul is uh, 15 years elder than Rowan. Five years ago, Rahul was three times as old as Rowan. Then find Rahul's present age. Rahul is 15 years elder than Rowan. So, Rahul is 15 years elder than Rowan. Five years ago, Rahul was three times as old as. So, if it is 2020 today, five years ago is going to be 2015. In 2015, Rahul was three times as old as Rowan. Rahul was three times as old as Rowan. So, which means the ratio is going to be three is to one. So, the difference between their age is 15 years elder than Rowan. 10 years back or 10 years after or today or whenever it is, the difference between two people's age will remain constant. For example, you and a brother have an age difference of 2 years. It will remain the same throughout your life. It will not be increasing or reducing at all. So, Rahul is 15 years elder than Rahul, I mean Rowan. So, which means since in 2005, their ratio is 3 is to 1, it's going to be very clear 3 minus 1, there's two parts difference in their age. The two parts is nothing but 15 years, which is very clearly given in this question. Difference in the age is 15 years. 
then one part is going to be 7.5 years then one part is 7.5 years so if one part is 7.5 years then what is rahul's present age is the question so we know one part is 7.5 years then 2015 rohan would have been 7.5 because he is one part as his age and rahul would have been 3 into 7.5 is nothing but 22.5 that would have been rahul's age in 2015 then in, what is present age of rahul rahul today it would have been 5 years more than that so his age would be 27.5 years 27.5 years plus 5 is this present age so it's 27.5 and rohan would have been plus 5 which is 12.5 which is rohan's age so rahul is 27.5 and rohan is 12.5 that is how simple is this question so next question one year ago the ratio of harry harry and peter's age was 5 to 6 so very similar question one year ago it's 2019 2019 their ages were in the ratio 5 is to 6 and respectively after 9 years after 9 years means 2000 from today it's 10 year 9 years later which means 2029 from today it is not about last year it's from today it's after 9 years the ratio is 7 is to 8 so which is 7 is to 8 so how old is peter and it's very clear here from five parts it's gone to seven parts which is two parts more and from six parts it's gone to eight parts which is again two parts more so it's very clear here it's very clear here both of them have the same difference here that is both of them that is two parts is getting increased here and two parts is also getting increased here so that two parts is nothing but two parts is nothing but uh it's very clear in this question two parts is nothing but 10 years 2019 to 2009 29 which is nothing but two parts is 10 years if it is two parts is 10 years then one part is going to be 5 years then one part is going to be 5 years so one part is 5 years means how old is peter is the question so peter's 2019's age was this is harry and this is peter so peter's 2019 age was six parts so one part is 5 years peter would have been 6 into 5 which is 13 in 2019 and 2020 is 30 plus 1 which is 31 years So 31 years is the age of Peter at the age uh, in 2020. How old is Peter today? So the answer is 31. So Shar Sharat is 50 years old and Santosh is 80 years old. How many years ago was the ratio 3 is to 6? So it is 50 80. So their ratio is Sharat is to uh, Santosh, which is nothing but 5 is to 8. So 5 is to 8 today, 2020. So how many years back they were? 3 is to 6 3 is to 6 is nothing but two parts lesser so two parts lesser is three parts 3 is to 6 so it's from this very clearly which we can say they've also told sharath is 50 years old and santosh is 80 years old so if it is 50 80 and if their ratio is 5 is to 8 how many years back their ratio was 3 is to 6 so if this 50 80 we can very easily say the ratio would have been 3 is to 6 that is 30 60 is when they would have got that ratio 3 is to 6 so it is going to be exactly 20 years back so 20 years back they would have got the ratio as 3 is to 6 that thing but 30 is to 60 very clear with this question itself we can very easily get to the answer need not even think about it because it's 5 is to 8 from 3 is to 6 it has gone to 5 is to 8 which means two parts gets increased so two parts gets increased very clearly then from there we can very easily take it as 20 50 80 is their present age means then two parts is five parts is 50 then eight parts is 80 then if it's three parts is going to be 30 and six parts is going to be 60 it's it's very obvious it's before 20 years so the next question a motor boat whose speed is 15 km per hour in still water goes 30 km downstream and comes back in four and a half hours uh four and a half uh four hours and 30 minutes the speed of the stream is we'll come back to question number 26 at the end because it takes some time we'll get on to the next questions and we'll get to this question at the last so the next question is in one hour a boat goes at 14 km per hour along the stream 8 km against the stream the speed of the boat in still water is is their question so the speed of the boat in still water along the stream that is downstream is 14 and they've clearly given upstream upstream speed against the stream is upstream is 8 and the question is speed of the boat in still water still water is still water we know very clearly still water is going to be the average of both of them so we know 14 some from still water something is added here 
that gives you downstream and from still water something is subtracted gives you upstream so the same value the stream value is going to be the same in both of them so we can very easily say it's the average so average is going to be nothing but 14.8 the average of both of them is going to be 22 by 2 it's nothing but 11 so your answer is going to be still water is 11 kilometers per hour next question a man rows to a place 48 km distant comes back in 14 hours he finds that he can row 4 kilometers with the stream in the same time as 3 kilometers against the stream so it's very clear the rate here they've given the speed is in the ratio 4 is to 3 if speed is in the ratio because he goes at the same speed 4 kilometers he takes if it takes 1 hour he takes the same 1 hour for 3 kilometers which means it is very clear for 4 kilometer per hour 3 kilometer per hour 4 is to 3 is their speed ratio then time is going to be the inverse of it 3 is to 4 so the total time is going to be 3 is to 4 which is nothing but 7 parts the 7 parts in this question they have taken how many hours there 14 hours 14 hours to do the job so the seven parts is 14 hours then one part is going to be two hours one part is going to be three two hours the question now is the rate of the stream is so we know in this they have given you the time taken is in the ratio three is to four so three is to four is nothing but for downstream and upstream for downstream it takes three hours three hours is nothing but three into two which is six hours six hours is taken by for downstream and this is for downstream and for upstream it takes 8 hours the rate of the stream is their question so he goes 6 hours if he goes 48 kilometers downstream then the speed of downstream is going to be 48 by 6 which is nothing but 8 kilometers per hour this is downstream downstream is 8 kilometers per hour upstream is going to be the same he goes at he goes at uh, 48 kilometers at 8 hours which is nothing but 6 kilometers per hour so downstream speed is 8 upstream speed is 6 then still water speed is going to be 7 very simple because it's the average 8 plus 6 divided by 2 or else we could say the mid value so it's 7 so then the speed of the stream is going to be whatever is added gets subtracted the other side so still water plus 1 7 plus 1 gives you 8 or else 7 minus 1 gives you 6 so 1 is going to be the speed of the stream rate of the stream is 7 so rate of the stream is 1 a very simple question and I'll tell you here very clearly they've given you speed ratio 4 is to 3 then the time taken will be in the ratio in inverse or the ulta of it 3 is to 4 so we take 7 parts of the time totally we take 3 plus 4 7 parts of the time to go down and come back so the 7 parts is totally given as 14 hours so if 7 parts is 14 hours then one part value is going to be 2 hours the 2 hours is nothing but 1 part then we know downstream it takes 3 parts which is 6 hours upstream it takes 4 parts which is 8 hours then 8 hours downstream say 6 hours downstream for 48 kilometers gives you 8 kilometers per hour should be the speed of the downstream should be downstream speed and upstream speed will be 6 kilometers per hour because it takes 8 hours for 48 kilometers so if it is downstream 8 and upstream is 6 then still water is going to be 7 speed of the stream is speed of the boat at the still water is 7 so we know then 1 kilometers per hour is going to be the stream speed so the next question the boat goes 2 kilometers against the stream of the against the current of the stream in 2 hours and 1 kilometer along the current of the stream in 20 minutes so then downstream speed is going to be how much upstream speed is going to be my boat goes 2 kilometers against the current of the stream which means upstream 2 kilometers in 2 hours so upstream speed is going to be 1 kilometer per hour because 2 kilometers in 2 hours gives you 1 kilometer for 1 hour and along the stream in 1 kilometer in 20 minutes for 1 20 minutes it goes 1 kilometer then for 60 minutes 1 kilometer for 20 minutes then for 60 minutes how much does it go that is going to be the downstream speed it's going to be very simple just cross multiplication it's 3 kilometers per hour downstream is 3 kilometers per hour then the question is how much time will it take to go 5 kilometers in stationary water stationary water is nothing but still water if downstream is 3 and upstream is 1 then we know still water is going to be the average which is 2 kilometers per hour this 2 kilometers per hour 2 kilometers is traveled by it in 1 hour 1 hour then the question is 5 kilometers is how long cross multiply its answer is 2.5 hours just nothing but 2 hours and 30 minutes so the next question find the ratio in which the ratio rise at 7.20 per kg be mixed with 5.70 per kg to get the value as for 6.30 so it's very simple with the allegation technique 5 7.20 5.70 
what ratio they both have to be added it's very clear here the answer is 0 0.90 here and 0 0.60 here so ratio is 2 is to 3 60 is to 90 is nothing but 2 is to 3 this ratio in, is which in which most of, most of you should be knowing this answer so the next one tickets numbered from 1 to 20 are mixed up then a ticket is drawn at random what is the probability that the ticket drawn as a number is a multiple of 20 so we have 20 options here 20 options the total sample space is 20 and should be a multiple of 3 so we have 3 or 6 or 9 or 12 or 15 or 18 any of the numbers can be picked or it should be multiple of 5 so which means 5 or 10 or 15 or 20 these are the two options that we have but we have 15 which is added both the times so we can take only once if we take it once we get it as 1 2 3 4 5 6 and we need not count it here so we have 5 10 15, 20 so there's three options here so totally we have 9 out of 20 options to get the answer as multiple of 3 or multiple of 5 so multiple of 3 is 6 options multiple of uh, uh, 5 is 4 options because we have 15 repeated both both the side we are taking it in, into account only once so we get it as 9 out of 20 that's the answer so the next question total sample space is 20 tickets so a bag has two red three green and two blue balls two balls are drawn at random what is the probability none of the balls drawn is blue so none of the balls should be blue so if it should not be blue it should not be blue then we have i'm taking this to make things simple for me i take red and green balls as other color balls so i'll get the options as other color or blue color only so if that is going to be the case other color is going to be five five balls and blue color is going to be two balls so the question is none of the balls should be uh, blue color so i'm choosing two balls so it should be both are going to be other color other color balls so which means the how many ways can i do that is other color is going to be five out of total number of balls is seven into four into six balls very simple technique so 5 into 7 into 4 into 6 so it's very clearly giving you the answer as 20 by 42 which is nothing but 10 by 21 very simple technique so the next question what is the probability of getting the sum as 9 when three dice are thrown so for three dice we would have used this technique and i would have thought you about three four five taking that drawing this year takes a lot of time i don't want to do that instead i would very easily tell you getting the sum as 9 with that technique is very simple and i know the answer is 25 by 216 very easily we can do it with that technique or else we can take sample spaces each one and we could take the answer that is for for three dice we can get the answer as one comma four comma five so one comma four comma five can arrange themselves in three numbers so three factorial ways they can arrange that is one way then we still have one one comma four comma four i'm sorry one comma four comma four this can be arranged as three factorial divided by two factorial which is nothing but three ways that is one comma four comma four or four comma one comma four or four comma four comma one so it can be arranged in three ways that is the technique then we have two comma three comma four two comma three comma four can be arranged in three factorial ways that is six ways that is six ways we could fill them so this can be done in six ways we could still do it as four comma four uh two comma three comma four then we can do it as three comma three comma three three comma three comma three this can be filled only in one way that is three comma three comma three then we can still do it as six comma two comma one we can do it as six comma two comma one six comma two comma one can be filled in three factorial ways again six and so on when we start doing it as this way it takes a long time and end of it we'll get to the answer as 25 by 216 instead the technique that we used in the class can help you solve this question easily so try doing those questions so the next question is next question next one is the total age of a and b is 12 years more than the age of b and c uh, then c is how many years younger than a so it's very easy in this question total age of a plus b is 12 years a plus b is total age of 12 a plus b is 12 more than the age of b plus c so b plus 12 more than b plus c so which means a plus b is equal to b plus c plus 12 so we know when we subtract we would very easily get these two gets cancelled so a is nothing but c plus 12 very clearly given here so then the question is how many c is how many years younger than a so it's very clear c is 12 years younger than a reason being 
a is equal to c plus 12. So c has to be added with 12. C's age should be added with 12 to get a. So c is 12 years younger than a. That's your answer. So next question. The sum of the present ages of father and his son is 60 years. Five years ago, father's age was four times as old as the son. So now son's age will be. So 60 years present father plus son is 60 years today. Five years ago. Five years ago is 2015. Four, 15, father is four times as old as son. So four times as old as son. So four is to one. So we five years back, father would have been five years lesser and son would have been five years lesser. So in total, their age would be reduced by 10 because we are talking about total age here. Sum. Sum is nothing but 60. So in total, their age before five years would have been five years less for the son and five years less for the uh, father. So 60 minus 10 is nothing but 50 would have been the total age. So total age is 50 if the that was before 5 years. So totally we know father would have been 4 times that age then 4 plus 1 is nothing but 5 parts. So 5 parts age is 50. This is before 5 years. So then 1 part value is going to be 10. So the father would have been 40 years back then and son would have been 10 years back then. So the question now is, so now the son's age is. So son today would have been 2020 would have been 10 plus 5 which is 15 years that is son's age. Reason being of the question which is given there. A very simple question. Father plus son today is 60 so before 5 years both would have been 5 years lesser. So which means the total age would have been minus 5 minus 5 which is nothing but 50 years. 50 years is their present age. I mean their age before 5 years. Back before 5 years, the ratio of the age is 4 is to 1. So, which means totally 5 parts. 5 parts is 50 years. Then 5 parts is 50 years. Then 1 part is 10 years. So, 1 part is 10 years. Then 4 parts is the father's age, which is 40 years. And son's age is 1 part, which is 10 years. So, 4 is to 1. So, totally, we get the value as father is 40 and son is 10. And that was before 5 years. And today's son's age is going to be plus 5. So, which is 50 years, 15 years. So, we have one question pending. That is question number 26. So the question. So in this question, a motorboat whose speed is 15 kilometers per hour in still water goes 30 kilometers downstream and comes back in four total of four hours and 30 minutes. So the speed of the stream is. So it's very clear here. The still water speed is 15 and downstream speed is not given. The upstream speed is not given. Totally takes four hours and 30 minutes. So from this, we can very easily understand. Maybe we can go with a trial and error which can make our problem very easy or, or else we should go with other techniques. Probably uh, I believe trial and error could help us serve better. So I'm trying to take the options of 10 or 5 year. So if I take it as 5, 10 as still speed of the stream as 5 year, speed of the stream is if it is 5, we know still water speed is 15, speed of the stream is 5, then downstream speed is going to be 20, upstream speed is going to be 10. So downstream speed is 20 and upstream speed is going to be 10. So the value is going to be speeds ratio is going to be 2 is to 1. Speed ratio is 2 is to 1. Then time taken ratio would be 1 is to 2. Time taken ratio is going to be 1 is to 2. So time taken is going to be in the ratio 1 is to 2. So if time taken is in the ratio 1 is to 2, uh, from this we can very easily say totally 3 parts of the time is taken. 3 parts is nothing but 4 and a half hours. 3 parts is nothing but 4 hours and 30 minutes. 3 parts is nothing but 4 hours and 30 minutes. If that is the case, 4 hours and 30 minutes is giving you uh, upstream, downstream it takes 1 and a half hours, 1 and a half hours and downstream it takes 3 hours. Downstream it takes uh, 1 and a half hours and upstream it takes 3 hours. So in total we take 4 and a half hours. So the boat speed in still water is going to be 15 kilometers per hour, 15 kilometers per hour. And so if the person had traveled at 20 kilometers per hour, if he travels for one and a half hours in downstream, it takes, he travels 30 kilometers. The same thing if he travels at upstream 10 kilometers per hour, it takes three hours for him to travel that 30 kilometers. So it's very clear in this, that is uh, time taken here is one part is to two parts. So which means one and a half hours to three hours. So it's very clear that for him to travel downstream, it takes... He travels at 20 kilometers per hour that is 5 kilometers per hour more than the still water and the upstream he travels at 10 kilometers per hour which is 5 kilometers lesser than the uh, still water speed so this is how this question goes 
So probably I'll explain you one more time. So we in this question it's very clear that the speed of the still water is 15 kilometers per hour. It takes 30 kilometers downstream and comes back in 4 hours and 30 minutes which means it travels 30 kilometers downstream and 30 kilometers upstream. So we are opting the option to be 5 and we take it into account we know still water speed is 15 then if we take 5 kilometers per hour as the stream speed we get downstream speed as 20 and upstream speed as 50, 10. So downstream if we travel at 20 kilometers per hour so the speed of downstream is to upstream becomes in the ratio 2 is to 1 then the time taken will be in the ratio 1 is to 2. So if that is the case the total parts of time is 3 parts the 3 parts is 4 hours and 30 minutes. So if 3 parts is 4 hours and 30 minutes one part is 1 and a half hours. So 1.5 hours. So 1.5 hours is taken for downstream travel. So downstream if I travel 1 and a half hours at 20 kilometers per hour I will travel 30 kilometers as given in the question. And the same thing if I travel at upstream if I travel at 10 kilometers per hour for 30 kilometers I take 30, 3 hours. So that is how this question works. So the answer is going to be 5 kilometers per hour. That is going to be the speed of the stream. So this is how simple is this. So I think you got the options. I mean answers for all the questions that you've solved. So please make sure you guys are rectifying your, uh, I mean you're preparing properly and taking up the test properly. And I thank you so much for the time and patience. I'll see you guys in my next video on the next full length test. Thank you so much.